Arab Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. We finally got back here into the studio here uh, to where we can get our news broadcast going again, running live as well, and catching up on the different things that are going on in and around the world, especially the Middle East uh, and uh, Eastern Europe, where things are definitely hot and heavy constantly. But right now, it is Syria that is the heavy battle zone. I caught it on C24 uh, check news today. I know it's also been on uh, CNN news already only three hours ago that the that Barack Obama who swore he was never sending troops on the ground in Syria uh, is sending in supposedly 50 special op forces into uh, northern Syria. Now this is not in conjunction with the Russian forces there. This is becoming a hotbed and on top of that Russian forces have bombed uh, U.S. backed rebels once again. And uh, so there is there's a major, major struggle that is going on in the Middle East as of right now. Um, and it is definitely not a good scene whatsoever. You're looking at the, on the screen there, the CNN report there where Obama uh, reveals his plan about sending in 50 uh, special op forces there into the Syrian, North, North Syria there. Now, for those of you that are maybe a little bit behind the eight ball on this here, you have to understand Syria and northern Israel, especially those places in the so-called West Bank, one of the largest oil finds ever has been discovered here. So western Syria, uh, you're dealing with northern Israel, the Golan, all these areas that have been contested anyway, because the Golan, according to Syria, belongs to them. According to Israel, it belongs to Israel. Uh, after the 1967 war where Israel actually took back more of their own land. And then you have uh, Mahmoud Abbas that has made a deal with, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, with President Vladimir Putin for the rights to do the natural gas and the oil, both in Gaza and in the West Bank already. It's been a multi-billion dollar uh, deal that has already been signed uh, by them as if they are a state. And of course, the Vatican's already declared them to be a state. And now the United States also, who is in need of securing the oil-rich areas there, is not happy with the fact that Russia has moved in. Now, one brother in particular sent me an email the other day and stated something I had never heard before. I haven't had a chance to be able to, to verify this, yes or no, but according to what he wrote me, and he says, uh, and I've asked him, excuse me, I've actually asked him if he could send me some uh, uh uh, some backup credibility for this as well, sourcing on this, but he tells me that Russia has only seven years le uh, left before their own oil and natural gas supply runs out in Russia, or at least oil anyway. Uh, this is the reason why Russia is in desperate need to be able to secure the oil field rich areas of Syria. He also believes that that, uh, that Iran will eventually attack Saudi Arabia and topple them. Uh, if, and if they do this, of course, Russia and Iran, the coalition there along with China, China, will secure all this oil for themselves. And this is something that the United States is definitely seeing this coming to pass right now. And it is a serious pro problem for the United States because the United States, just like uh, what we're seeing with, um, what we are actually seeing there with Russia, they have need of oil as well, and we don't have enough supplies in the United States that can last forever either. There's some estimates another 50 years would be about it before they would run out. So a lot of different things must be done in order to maintain the way that people are living uh, if, if they expect to uh, maintain their, their status of life. And uh, so therefore, Russia is definitely pushing for it as well as the United States. And uh, bringing you here real quick, I just want to show you here. This is actually one of the strikes here. This is, uh, uh, is, is produced by the Telegraph. Uh, looking at this here, if you look on your screen there, uh, this is Russia bombing U.S.-backed rebels that are there to topple Basra Assad. And they're not in any agreement whatsoever with one another. Russia and the United States are definitely enemies at this point here. Uh, they They... Of course, there's a claim to be allies. Putin has tried to reach out to the United States. The United States has refused to be of any cooperation whatsoever to the Russian forces and now sending 50 special op forces. Now, 
they say 50, I can only imagine the number is probably much greater than 50 because normally what they say on the news is only a fraction of what they're really going to do. Uh, so nonetheless, uh, and of course Obama is claiming that there's not going to be any more than what he's sending in now. Uh, but that remains to be seen. Clearly what they're trying to do is to take control of the northern part of Syria uh, and who knows what may happen next. We could see an all-out war break out here in the Middle East. You know, tensions are high. Israel is there. Israel has also has bombed um, uh, Basra Assad's forces. Even with Russia there backing uh, Basra al-Assad, Israel bombed their forces uh, only about a week ago, uh, creating more tensions with Israel, with Russia. And, uh, you know, so friends, things are just not good right now in the Middle East there. It's, it's a very tense situation, and it could easily, easily spiral out of control there. Um, anyway, another, another important news here, just a little clip here I caught here. As, as you guys know, the violence continues in Israel. It's no sign of let up whatsoever. Abbas now hands over Israeli war crimes file to the ICC. Uh, the delegation led by the PA chairman meets with the ICC, hands over a file of the document alleged Israeli uh, ethnic cleansing, as he claims it to be, which is kind of absurd. Here they are attacking the Jews, massacring Jews, and Israel is only trying to defend itself, and then they're accused to, 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 to or villainizing Israel as if Israel is the bad guy. Anyway, it says, uh, the Arab delegation led by the Palestinian Authority, Chairman Mahmoud Abbas on Friday, met with the International Criminal Court to hand over a file documenting alleged Israeli crimes such as ethnic cleansing, Palestinian officials said, according to AFP. Abbas arrived late Friday at the court for talks with Prosecutor Fatou uh, Ben Soda, accompanied by the Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad al-Malaki. The news agency reported the talks at the world's only permanent war crimes court came amid an increasing of Israeli-Palestinian violence and marked Abbas first meeting with Ben Sada since the Palestinian Authority sparked controversy by joining the tribunal in January. Um, it's just, like I said, friends, it is not good. There is many, many things that are going on in Israel. Uh, more and more people are being killed there, and we are going to do a recap this weekend. Uh, it is, uh, Shabbat has begun here. Uh, but I thought it was important for you guys to be aware of this. I'm sure CNN had caught this. I did not know at the time when I was preparing to come on the news that CNN had already picked up on this news broadcast uh, about U.S. troops because sometimes we get things that you guys don't hear about at all. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, that is going on. The other thing that we were wanting to do tonight was to bring out a special report about the Pope of Rome. I will actually save that for, for Monday night. He is unifying. He did this on October the 20th there. Uh, Pope Francis spoke there at the general audiences, uh, and he spoke about the Second Vatican Council that was it was on the anniversary on October the 20th there that was started 50 years ago to reach outside to out, uh, to uh, outside religious groups for unity, and he was speaking about the progress of that and how that. Uh, what was once enemies, uh, the Jews, and uh, then he speaks about the Arabs as well, are the Muslim religions that they are now friends. Of course, he speaks out about the, the Jewish people, but he made kind of an interesting way that he stated this about uh, as far as the Jewish people. He said that it was uh, something that was, that there's, oh gosh, I forget how he actually, I, I should have wrote the words down, but anyway, he seemed to be more friendly towards the Muslim side and uh, less friendly towards the Jewish side. Nonetheless, very serious things are going on. Uh, some very things, some, some things I'd like to really bring out. I'd like to go with you uh, this weekend back to the book of Revelation to look at this, uh, the Antichrist. Let's take a look at that again. Let's look and see exactly how these prophecies are playing out. Let's take a look at Ezekiel 38. Let's take a look at uh, uh, Revelation 16, Revelation 13. Many different prophecies that are being fulfilled right before our eyes. Things are, 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 are just majorly unraveling prophetically here at this final hours that we are living in this world here. I say final hours, I realize that we still have the two witnesses have got to come on the scene. Uh, there's a lot of things that could still happen. Who knows how many years are left? Seven, eight years? 
uh, could be a little less. I'm not sure, but the point is, is we are at the door and you are ready to sit, no doubt, on the edge of your seat to watch all this unfold. Anyway, we are, we are working also, by the way, for uh, YouTube on our channel there. For those of you watching here on live stream, we are uh, actually going to dedicate our YouTube channel that we have currently now, that we've always used it for the Noon Institute of Biblical Research as well as Israeli News Live. We are ready to dedicate that solely to Israeli News Live, but from the prophetic aspect there. So you'll still be getting the Bible teaching, but it seems, especially in the hour we're living in now, the prophetic side of what's going on is what's very important for people to be aware of now. Anyway, I'm Stephen Benoon. You've been watching Israeli News Live. Shalom, good night, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.